For example, we have two functions. Now, I will give you a little bit of, you know, I'm sure you guys do not remember or are not as familiar with the cube root of x. It wasn't on your quiz, because that's what I thought you guys would be a little bit, even though it was fair game for you guys. But we basically have two functions here. So let's go and write out the cube root of x, since I did tell you to make sure you knew what these graphs look like. You guys could probably shake your head and say, oh, yeah, I kind of remember looking at that. And then we have the e to the x, which has an intercept there, which looks like that. OK? So, so we have two functions. We have the cube root of x and then plus 2. So then we got to think, all right, are we adding inside or outside? And we can see we're adding outside. So all that's doing to that graph is just shifting it up two units, right? So let's just sketch that graph up two units. It looks something like that. Something like that. All right. However, it says only graph this for when x is greater than 0. Only. That's the only time I want this, this to be graphed is when x is greater than 0. So you can see, guys, here's the x-axis. For x values that are greater than 0, is only everything that's positive. Only when x is positive are you going to graph this function. So we don't need to graph anything over here. Then we have our e to the x function. e to the x looks like this. Then we look at our transformation. Uh-oh, we're multiplying by a negative. So we say, all right, we multiply by a negative inside or outside the function. Well, since it's as a power, it is inside the function. And when we multiply by a negative inside the function, Per our notes, that is a reflection about the y-axis. Y so it's basically this graph flipped about the y-axis. So then it looks something like this. Oh, I'm sorry. For one thing, it says x is greater than 0, right? So that's open circle. But then the restriction is I want you to graph this for only values that are less than 0. Basically, another way of saying I only want you to graph this for negative values. So only there. So all of this is gone, and we have another hole. So now you guys can see that at x equals 0, there is a jump discontinuity, or a non-removable discontinuity. Because you're jumping from one function to the next. Here, it's the same function. You're just going, there's just a hole in the graph. So you're jumping, the other one, you know, it's still about jumping. You're jumping from one to the next. So there's a gap. There's a gap between the functions. Here, there's not a gap, it's a hole. So the hole is going to be jumping every jump is going to be. Right. Okay. Yes. Because the negative is inside the function. If it was a negative outside the function, you would reflect about the x axis. Any other questions? Yes? So then could 0 be considered an asymptote or not? Because it doesn't have. Um, no, because well, the tech, well, an asymptote is discontinuous, just like a, a hole or. Um, um, but not all jumps. Like this is not. So, yeah, so. Well, we didn't do, we did, you guys didn't do an example like this. But um, so, yeah, it's not defined for this value, right? But the idea, the understand also an asymptote, the graph, so you can see there, an asymptote, the graph is going to approach that asymptote. right? So here, you can see that there, where there's an asymptote, the graph is actually approaching it. Where in this respect, it's, you can see that it's not really so much approaching it, it's just getting, it's just at a hole, it's just empty. right? So it's not really approaching it from like a direction right or to the left or from both. It's just, it's at a hole. Okay. Well, it's really empty spots, which empty spots would make a jump. Anybody have any other questions? All right. So let's review group work. 